Let your eyes move across the water in this painting. Notice how the still lake reflects the sky in the distant mountain. Painters often use water to create an emotional effect, in this case, tranquility and expansiveness. But for the artists who painted this serene image, water often had a personal meaning. Robert Duncanson was descended from freed Virginia slaves. Despite the debilitating racism of mid-19th century America, he was able to succeed as an artist and become what one contemporary critic called the best landscape painter in the West. While Duncanson never overtly addressed racial issues in his paintings, subtle messages do appear. For example, bodies of water such as the Ohio River, which divided slave and free states, often represented the longing for freedom. Duncanson painted this work, Mount Orford, in Canada, where he lived in exile during the Civil War. Once we know the circumstances, might we see the tranquility of the Canadian lake in the foreground as a deliberate contrast to the savage war being fought across the border to the south? Might the sublime peak of the mountain, rising above the smoke of clouds, be experienced as a transcendent ideal of freedom? What do you think? Born in Fayette, New York in 1821, Robert Duncanson grew up in Michigan, where he took up the family trade of house painting. Not content to just paint houses, Duncanson taught himself fine art by copying prints and painting portraits. He began his professional career in Cincinnati, then known as the Athens of the West for its flourishing art scene. Cincinnati was also a hotbed for the anti-slavery movement, and Duncanson was able to secure commissions and build lifelong relationships with sympathizers who wanted to support black artists. Duncanson was heavily influenced by Thomas Cole, and he embraced the Hudson River School's moral messages, literary associations, and romanticism. His work developed an international reputation, and with the outbreak of the American Civil War, his success allowed him to place himself in exile in Canada and Europe, where he received critical acclaim. At the height of his fame in the early 1870s, Duncanson's health failed him, perhaps due to his exposure to lead paints as a house painter. He died preparing for an exhibition in Detroit in 1872. Although after his death his name faded into obscurity, Today, Duncanson is considered groundbreaking not only as one of the first African-American professional artists, but also as one who reached a level of prestige unprecedented in the United States.